I'm Julia. Hi, I'm Simon from Aphoria. We're going to have a chat mm. now, I think, about working with clients at the specialising level of maturity. So that kind of some general, is there a general approach, do you think, or a feel for working with clients at this level? Hmm, I think there is. I think what is most noticeable to me is, um, you know, we were speaking earlier about conforming level where people give kind of conventional norms, platitude answers. Mm. Here, people are thinking for themselves, but also giving their the norms from their profession. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of a craft logic, my job supplies me with the way of thinking about the world. Okay, so with the conforming people, it's, it's my identity comes from my membership of, of a group. Community. Yeah, yeah. community. Mm -hmm. And here, so it's more of a, my identity comes from my profession, mm. my technical mm. expertise. Yeah. yeah, and often, you know, a, a lot of professions construct professionalism around this idea of scientific and rational thought mm. and irrational emotions. Mm -hmm. So often these guys focus on rational thought, um, scientific way of behaving, credibility based on what you've studied, mm. what you've delivered. Mm. And there's a lot of beauty to that as well, right? Mm. Um, so we don't want to kind of throw that out or um, dissuade seeing the value in that. Um, as a coach, uh, yeah. It's yeah, it's just not the full story it's about full how story. humans are operating. Yeah. So I mean, maybe you talk a little bit about what what is missing or what can be sort of developed in mm. working. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's there's a piece just before that which is around sometimes, and it popped into my head just now around there can be resistance to coaching at this mm. level. I think which we don't get at conforming level mm. because. There's a, well, I've been told I need to do this coaching and so I'm going to do it and mm. fit in and not rock the boat. I think with the specialising level, sometimes there can be a little bit of pushback mm. around coaching as being something that might be seen as a bit woo-woo or a bit weird or, mm. you know, it's like, well, I know how to be a project manager in a manufacturing plant. Mm. What more could coaching tell me about how to operate this machinery or, you know, whatever the job mm. is? And so an idea that um, this isn't part of my job, so why should I do it? Um, and just maybe being a little bit ready for that resistance sometimes, because mm. there, there can be some scepticism, I think, at a specialising level around, mm. around inner work, you know, mm. what we might call inner work. Mm, you mean like psychology and emotions and stuff? Yeah. yeah you know, why should I, what's the value of me exploring my feelings? Yeah. So, I just, I'm here to do a job. Yeah. Exactly. So kind of not really connecting that feelings are a critical part of doing a job. Yeah, yeah. Of connecting with your peers and of understanding the world. And mm. What do you do around that kind of resistance if you feel it? You know, it's more of a felt sense. Um, yeah. I think one way to work with it is to try and provide like the business case for working mm. with emotions. Mm. And typically with that, you know, I would refer to our video on working with emotions. Mm. But, you know, they're very useful in building relationships, getting information, getting a team to transcend, you know, what, what they do to deliver more, yeah. to really perform. And I would come in from, from that perspective, but feeling my way in gently mm. to see what was important to that person. The other thing, of course, is that... Um, you know, how do you grease relationships? Well, it's emotions and, um, you know, you, you need to find ways to connect with people in order to make things happen. Mm. So your whole capacity to deliver as a manager or leader or teacher is relationships. They're the bridge across which all the other things flow. Mm. I like that. I like the idea of a bridge. Mm. It's kind of a concrete structure. That mm people at specialising level might appreciate yeah. as, a, as a metaphor. Yeah. yeah. You can't send an instruction to someone else or teach them anything unless you have a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. 
and how do you get the sense, so if there's no assessment and you haven't seen a report on a person, um, just from language alone, sometimes we speak of that idea of being able to feel a particular level of maturity through their use of language. Mm -hmm. um, how, what, are the, what are the markers there for you? Uh, for me it would be um, probably a more scientific approach mm. to um, expressing themselves maybe the use of kind of toolboxes, ways of working with stuff like um, I'm using this toolbox of how to work with emotions yes. and there are three points of action in each of the components mm. so it's sort of quite a structured way of working mm. I think that's <clears throat> you can listen for that I think yeah. also something in the style of it being delivered there can sometimes be a certainty about how life is, you know, like this is how life is. I've got the right recipe. I know how things work. Yeah, um, I think that right, right recipe and right and wrong mm. as being quite definite mm. for me with people at a specializing level can speak with quite a lot of certainty about mm. the world mm. as if I, I know it. I have mm. enough data to know the world. Mm. And so my perspective is it's based on sound rationale and logic and data. Mm. And if people don't have the same perspective, then they must be wrong. Or they've got no common sense. Yes, common sense is something yeah. else that pops up at yeah. the specialising level. Yeah. But there's a, and there's you know there's a lot of beauty as we've said around rational and logical thinking, and it's really required in some jobs. So again, just to, to reinforce that when working with this client, and then start to challenge that notion a little bit as well. You know, just because you have data, do you think you've got the whole picture yeah. here? Particularly where humans are concerned. Because humans are messy and emotional, not rational, actually, at all. And so if somebody's job or somebody's life involves people, which generally most of our lives and jobs do, mm -hmm. then there might be the need for something beyond just the numbers and just the technical orientation. Yeah. yeah, and what to do with the sensations and the insights and intuitions mm. that you feel in life. <clears throat> yeah. So, so when you're working with somebody at specialising, how, what's your entry point there in terms of starting to get that, that emotional component mm. in? Well, I think with these guys, you have to be credible. Mm. So I don't, I mean, yeah, I might talk to them about how I've studied to be a coach, Mm. I'm an expert on this, mm. but I'm not an expert on their life. Mm. You know, I bring expertise in, but the application of that expertise is something they need to deliver. So I sort of establish myself as credible. Mm. Um, and, then, and then move on to seeing what's bothering them, what's meaningful for them. Mm. Rather than kind of coming in with a pat answer. Um, yeah, what's meaningful to them and and how are they making sense of it? Yeah. How are they thinking through this this area of concern? Mm. Um, and are they taking emotions into account? Yeah. And if they are taking their own emotions, are they also looking at other people's emotions, mm. kind of seeing how that's going to affect the mm. outcome? I think the kind of overdeveloped cognitive feel mm. to, to these guys means that absolutely emotions are not coming in. And I found, and in fact I had a client this morning, mm. interestingly, um, around using the body as a way of connecting more with emotions and what's going on inside. So this idea of stopping, pausing, reflecting, and even, even doing embodied activities so actually this specializing client this morning is now going off to start yoga which sure. was just such a amazing moment um, huh? for somebody who's been very skeptical about anything to do with the body anything to do with self-care because it's not head related yeah and so I think that the body can be an amazing source of information around emotions for people so I often encourage people at specializing level to start connecting with their embodied self mm. as well. Mm. Just through, you know, a walk in nature or 
a massage or an activity mm. which opens up space for emotions to come in because I think that, that people at specialising often are really kind of blocking them unconsciously. Mm. Mm. I think that's a great idea. Mm. So going kind of not through the brain but kind of around the brain, yeah. through the body. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Anything else spring to mind around um, working with people at specialising level as a coach? Anything else you've mm, encountered? Yeah, I mean, there's plenty that could be said, but, you know, if this idea that I'm here to perform, you know, I think these guys want to deliver value mm. and um, to work hard and they're conscientious, hardworking people, one of the things I might explore with them is this idea of how are you measuring what you do? Is mm. it through, like, what you put in, the inputs? Mm. Or is it the outputs? It's like yeah. saying, it's a difference between saying to people, you need to work from eight to six every day, mm. and that's a measurement of your work, mm. versus you need to achieve three chimpanzees and a budgie in sewing goods every day. I'm wondering what their job is of this particular specialising client. They're sewing people. Okay. They sew, they make stuffed animals. So um, <laughs> it's about, you know, what's the input, what's the output. Yeah. So these guys tend to focus on the inputs generally. Yes. So it's sort of a developmental direction for them is to start moving to outputs. What do the output look like? I like that. Inputs and outcomes. Yeah. And, uh, in the same way, I think there's something around efficiency and effectiveness. Mm. And, and yeah. what I notice sometimes working with people at a specialising level, the focus is on efficiency. Yeah. Whereas at the next level, and I guess we're always wanting to give a window into the, to mm. the next level, certainly emotions is a, is a window that mm. we can open as a coach to somebody at this level. Mm. But also this idea that, that being efficient isn't always being effective. Yeah. So effectiveness as a measure, I think, will then pull our awareness towards outcomes mm. even more. Mm. So I, I think that distinction often is useful mm. for people at this level and to become more, more effective and less focused on efficiency, mm. ironically. Mm. Yeah. I think that's a really good tip.